Uh, hi, David. Uh, thank you for joining us today with us at Ijebo. I'm happy to have this uh, time to hear your story uh, from kind of studying, I assume, uh, from studying uh, to working in Lacten Symphony. So if you could uh, begin by giving us your introduction, that would be great. Yeah, sure. And it's nice to meet you too. And um, quick introduction of mine would be that I um, did my high school and my undergraduate degree in India. Okay. So I did a degree, um, Bachelor's of Science in Computer Science. Mm -hmm. And from there, I came to Japan and I stayed in Fukushima while I did my master's degree at the University oh. of Aizu. Mm -hmm. So my master's degree was also in computer science. Mm -hmm. And it was during COVID, so it was not a lot of fun. It was kind of isolated. But um, afterwards, I joined Rakuten Symphony. Mm -hmm. And now I'm working with them on the AI platform team as a data science engineer. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for the uh, introduction. Um, what was your first uh, encounter with Japan or what made you want to do your master's uh, in Japan? So, I mean, I would say there are two different things here. Um, my first encounter with Japan would be about you know, hearing about it in the news or seeing um, video games coming from there or mm -hmm. um, anime or those kinds of um, products. Right. And in terms of actually studying here, um, during my undergraduate university, I had a professor who knew another professor who teaches in Japan. And right. uh, when we were looking at graduation, I was applying for jobs and uh, the professor in India, he, he said, why don't you look at studying in Japan? Mm -hmm. There's this university called the University of Aizu. Mm -hmm. It offers its courses in English and it's it's a good place where you could do your master's degree. Okay. And um, as it happened, uh, COVID had started around that time. Yeah. So places were slowly going into lockdown and I figured that, okay, it's going to be difficult to get a job at this point. So yeah. why don't I look at doing my master's degree? Mm -hmm. and um, it worked out like that okay so how was uh, your experience well especially it's a bit different especially when it was COVID but how was it uh, studying in Fukuoka uh, no, Fukushima sorry Fukushima um, yes yeah doing your master's there uh, was there a lot of mm -hmm. international students there were international students, but unfortunately, it was difficult to actually meet them oh. because um, due to COVID, we didn't have any social events. And oh. um, I mean, I personally find it a little difficult to socialize with people after class. Mm -hmm. If there's some kind of event or something, then it helps me get to know others more easily. Yeah. yeah. So as a result, most of the people I knew were those who were in my department or in my lab, which was the database lab. Okay. So I did get to meet a few international students there, but mm -hmm. I there was a much wider student body, which I didn't get to interact too much with at that time. Okay, I see. And how was your experience? Well, maybe it's a bit uh, specific when it's you know oh. the beginning of COVID, but your experience moving to Japan, has that process been a bit difficult or was it smooth? So... I was fortunate because my university handled a lot of things. Uh -huh. So, um, I mean, obviously they had to create the certificate of eligibility, but mm -hmm. I had to get the hanko or the stamp. So they right. helped with preparing that. Um, okay. They gave me a few different um, apartments I could look at for my stay mm -hmm. and uh, helped me negotiate with, um, things like setting up electricity, the gas, mm. water, all of that. Right. And um, overall, it was relatively smooth. I mean, yeah. because of COVID, I had to quarantine for two weeks yeah. in um, in a hotel near Tokyo. But afterwards, mm -hmm. they helped organize my transport as well, the train which oh, I had wow. to take. Yeah. And uh, when I arrived, they um, they have a few staff members who are there specifically to help international students. Oh, and okay. um, they helped, uh, helped me get my apartment set up, get my basic documents and everything set up, my, mm -hmm. my number card for tax purposes set up. 
yeah. so they were a massive help to me okay great so i guess with the help of your university uh even if you don't speak too much japanese it was not a problem yeah okay and do you think that the japanese as japanese aspect has been different when you started looking for apartments after your university after your master so after my master's degree um i mean i had to move to tokyo yeah and it wasn't too difficult either because okay. i was able to find a real estate agent who spoke english and uh -huh. she was a very friendly lovely lady and um she helped me find an apartment and helped me set up my utilities oh, wow. and okay. even my internet she was, okay. she was very kind yeah. um i have had friends who have had to do some of it on their own okay it, wow. uh, i mean it definitely depends i i got very lucky because yeah uh, i found someone really nice okay so in general do you speak any japanese or do you feel like you need to like learn or have a little bit of Japanese when you are there? Absolutely. I mean, especially in Fukushima. So mm -hmm. you come to Tokyo, yeah. if you go to see a convenience store, odds are the cashier may know a little bit of English to be able to help you out. But mm -hmm. in Fukushima, no, nothing. They, you know, they just yeah. speak Japanese. They have no reason yeah. to learn English. Yeah, of course. So I picked up basic, some basic Japanese. So Okay. If I need to get something done, if I need to go to a store, pick up, pick up something, ask some general questions, I can do that much. Okay. I do feel that I need to improve because mm -hmm. I know that it's holding me back, my current mm -hmm. level of Japanese. Okay. So that's something I'm trying to push myself to improve on. Okay. I see. Cool. Then moving on to your current uh, work positions, could you explain a yeah. little bit about what Rakuten Symphony does? I know that it's a group company of Rakuten, of course, sure. and I know that it has to do with mobile technology, maybe. But sure. could you give us, yeah. So you have Rakuten Mobile, and they are trying to compete as a mobile carrier in Japan. Right. And in order to compete, they've got a different network architecture and different sort of approach to the mm -hmm. mobile network to mm -hmm. try and stand out from the competition. Okay. And what I think they realized was that we have this technology, we have, uh, it's, so their network is more cloud-based. The idea being you have a small base station, it relays the information back to the servers, mm -hmm. whatever processing has to happen, happens there, and it sends mm -hmm. the information back. So you, yeah. you don't need as much of a setup in each location. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, this is me guessing what the yeah. thought process was, but they probably said that we have this technology, we're creating the hardware, creating the software. Mm -hmm. We needed to be competitive in Japan, mm -hmm. but what about overseas? We are okay. creating all these tools, all this hardware. Why don't we look at how we can sell it overseas to other uh -huh. telecom operators? Yeah. And so Rakuten Symphony was sort of split off from Rakuten Mobile okay. with the idea that Rakuten Symphony handles the software and I think some of the hardware side of uh, the operations okay and also um sells those services to overseas companies okay i see so is your working environment more more or less comprised with many international workers absolutely i mean i would say that rakuten symphony is easily 50 percent or more international workers oh wow i you know, we do have our um japanese co-workers of course Mm -hmm. But it's also um, absorbed companies overseas. So it's quite a diverse group, which we've got. Okay, I see. Good. Then what's what do you like about your current position? The main thing uh, which I like about my current position is the probably the level of learning which I'm able to receive here. The, okay. Um, one of the challenges of, say, data science is that a lot of the times companies want somebody who has experience working on large data sets. Mm -hmm. And that's difficult for you to do on your own because mm -hmm. you have a computer, but you won't always have the data or you won't have 
the sort of difficulties which actual companies face um mm -hmm. with handling large amounts of data and creating uh, machine learning systems to handle them mm -hmm. over here i'm able to get that experience okay. and i'm able to work with a larger number of team uh, of experienced team members mm -hmm. who are also able to give me a certain level of guidance and get me running right because otherwise i would be struggling a lot more to be able to build my skills to where they are right now mm -hmm. if i was in say a startup because yeah the level of challenges the level of techniques required would not be even close to the same mm, i see okay cool yeah then uh do you feel like as a well not it's not necessarily a new graduate but just you know uh mm. after your master's degree and going into rak 10 was there um kind of um help and support from your from your teammates so from my teammates uh not so much but that's because my teammates are actually in india and ah. i'm over here in japan but uh, -huh. uh my colleagues or my dokis who i joined with yeah. you know we kept in touch um we would help each other out if somebody needed something mm -hmm. most of us had already been living in japan for a few years so we had the mm -hmm. experience to be able to handle things okay um Great. but if you if in if it's in terms of um sort of teaching me skills and tools for the job then mm -hmm. absolutely my team has been a huge help okay. um my manager gives a uh, proper pointed feedback specific okay. things to work on yeah. um if i'm if i've say done an analysis on some data incorrectly mm -hmm. then um, a teammate of mine will walk me through what the correct steps are what they're looking for from the analysis what yeah. things i need to think about which is okay. very important wow. to build that foundation yeah of course okay then do you think that there's a difference in working styles between when you were maybe doing your internships or working in india to now working in japan mm, it's a little difficult to say because um i am working with an international team so yeah um course. the japanese work culture is not as strong over here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I do feel that there is a pressure to get things done by the deadline to mm -hmm. get things done um to have things very well fleshed out very thorough work mm -hmm. I don't know if that's due to um the company or due to the country that's I I don't yeah. think I know enough to say that but okay um I did do one internship in Japan but that was mm -hmm. again with an international startup so okay it was a little uh, more relaxed i was mm -hmm. able to fully remote work with my current oh, wow. company they expect me to come to office every day oh wow and okay. they're a bit stricter on rules okay with and um for example in my situation my team is in india there is no real benefit for me to come to the office yeah because anyways i will go home and i'll still do some remote work with the mm -hmm. team yeah. but because the rule is that you have to come to the office i'm expected to come to the office mm -hmm. so there is okay. still that strictness about the rules i see wow okay i haven't heard that from many of the people that i've uh, had an interview so it's interesting to okay. see the differences yeah. yeah okay and then did you have to do you feel like you had to change how you work or how you work with your teammates in order to fit into uh, the company that you you know that you're working on now um not too much if i compare it to my internships oh so i mean i wouldn't compare my college work because <laughs> the deadlines and you know you work late into the night you work whenever you want that's <laughs> not even close to how organized you'd have yeah. to get a company but with my internships it's fairly similar um where i have to keep in touch with my manager or with the senior team members mm -hmm. just share the progress on my work as as i continue um they may ask me at the end of the day what all did you accomplish today or what did you work on today so i have mm -hmm. to be able to give that i have to be able to sort of break down my work mm -hmm. into smaller goals and okay. show that progress as i complete uh -huh. those goals 
Right. Okay. Interesting. Um, okay. Then moving a bit into just a bit like in how you got the job, uh, sure. do you feel like um, there was anything that you specifically had to do when you were applying for jobs and maybe do, while you were doing the interviews? Were there anything that um, you yeah, focused on improving or kind of, I'm not sure, but yeah, any tips yeah, on? I understand. Yeah. So for me, I'm, I was looking at a data science role or mm -hmm. software engineering role. Mm -hmm. And um, the one common thing uh, with the, with most of the companies which I applied to was some form of practical test. Okay. Now, yeah. this could be they give me a data science or a machine learning uh, kind of question, and they ask mm -hmm. me to create a basic recommendation system, or they'll give me access to some data and they'll say, give us some insights about mm -hmm. these, this, this, this from the data. Yeah. Or um, they'll just give an online coding um, test. So you have mm -hmm. competitive coding where mm -hmm. it says, this is your input. Um, these are your constraints. Um, give us your output. And mm -hmm. then you have to write a program which handles that. Yeah. So um, the practical, or even they might just ask me questions. Um, okay. That is like on spot. If this is, yes, on the spot. So oh, if okay. I'm doing an interview with someone, they may say that, okay, this is the, we have a swimming pool. We need this information about the water mm -hmm. pump. These are the factors which affect the water pump. Mm -hmm. How would you create um, a model or a machine learning model or a data science model to yeah. give us the information we need? Wow. So you don't necessarily have to do it, but mm -hmm. you have to know the concepts which you would apply. Right. Okay. And I assume that all of these interviews were done in English. Yes, um, I did try one Japanese interview. It was very <laughs> difficult. Uh -huh. um, but yes, uh, all of these interviews were done in English otherwise. Okay. Um, this may be a bit of a specific question, but do you feel like having done your master's in Japan gave you a bit of a um, kind of like head start or, you know, a plus to uh, us who, who you are in when you were applying for jobs? Definitely. Um, being in Japan definitely gave me a bit of a, a boost when I was applying to companies because a lot of the time the companies want somebody who is already located in Japan. Uh -huh. The process for getting someone over for the first time, mm -hmm. as I understand it, that process requires some more investment from the company. Yeah, so if you're already located in Japan and better, you've graduated from a Japanese university, mm -hmm. that gives the company more confidence in you. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, he's graduated from a university over here. He meets a certain standard. Yeah. And um, if it's an overseas university, they may not have as much confidence because they don't know mm -hmm. what the standards of that country are That's true. and how, how much you may have learned. Right. Whereas okay. if you're coming from here, it gives mm -hmm. them a bit more confidence. Yeah, okay. I see. Then looking into in long term, do you have any goals or uh, yeah, uh, just uh, yeah, um, dream about your career here in Japan or just in data science? I would say the main goal, I, I mean, two main goals. The okay. first would be to improve my understanding of more widely used systems. Mm -hmm. So an unfortunate downside of working with a larger company is that a lot of the development process for software is segmented. Uh -huh. So what I mean by that is that if a team comes to us and says, we want you to create code, which does this, mm -hmm. we, so my team will do the prototyping. We'll do the research. We'll create the basic model. Yeah. But then we'll give it to another team who will then look at integrating it with the current with the current system look mm -hmm. at how to deploy it yeah these are it's more specialized skills it's more com it's more broken up mm -hmm. but since i'm still early in my career mm -hmm. for me i feel like it would have it would be more beneficial if i had a better idea of the entire process mm, that this okay. is this is where you start this is what you do this is what you do now that you have your solution you use this yeah. in this way to deploy it so that the customer can use it. 
Okay. And that's something you miss out on. Okay. So that's one understanding I want to improve, which is that the entire process and the different tools used in it. Yeah. The second thing is I absolutely want to improve my Japanese. Okay. Because I keep an eye on the job market just to get an yeah. idea of where I currently am in my career mm -hmm. and yeah. how well I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I see that there are so many roles which are yeah. good roles, mm -hmm. but they want a certain level of Japanese, typically right. N3 or N2 level Japanese. Okay. Yeah. And it's very obvious to me that, you know, I'm just hurting my chances by not improving my understanding of the language. Mm -hmm. I see. The, um, I know that some companies offer uh, foreign uh, workers to take like Japanese lessons. Is that something yes. that your company also offers? It does offer a, a level of discount for some lessons, I believe. Oh, okay. Good. Is it something that you have in mind to maybe take up on? Uh, no, I plan to follow a slightly different path. Um, oh, okay. I'm trying to improve it by reading. You have these sort of graded reading books. Okay. We'll start with the basic characters, the hiragana and katakana. Ah, right. Yeah. And then slowly they introduce the uh, the kanji, the symbolic characters yeah. more into the, into the books. And through mm -hmm. that, the idea is you oh, get an cool. inner understanding of how it works. Ah, okay. Interesting. Okay, cool. Then moving on to uh, your social aspect uh, here being yes. in Japan. Uh, what do you like about the Japanese culture? Um, yeah. So it's um, what I like about it is a, a bit of the order. It's not okay. to say that, um, you know, everybody always walks in a line. There are no crowds or anything like that. No, people move yeah. around. Some people litter. People are people. Yeah. <laughs> but there is a certain level of order you can expect from interacting in public mm -hmm. there is a certain structure to how things are done which mm -hmm. is efficient and mm -hmm. once you get the hang of it it helps you so something very simple you you have an escalator if you are going to stand still on the escalator you stand mm -hmm. on the left yeah and if you want to walk up then you go on the right yeah Un unless it's really crowded in which case <laughs> both lanes get filled but yeah it's simple but it's efficient. It helps people get where they want to yes. go faster. Yeah. Instead of people just standing wherever they feel like on the escalator. Mm -hmm. In which case, you know, if you want if you're in a rush and you want to quickly go up, you have to sort of push people to the side or ask them to right. move constantly. Yeah. Okay. I see. What it's you just yeah. I think that sort of social consideration which is expected from each person which helps. Okay. Uh-huh. Was it kind of difficult to adjust to that in the beginning? Or uh, something not, that you learn. I mean, I wouldn't say it was difficult to adjust. I did have to learn, learn it mm. to get an idea of what people do and see why they do it. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a lot of it is very logical and, and simple to follow. Okay. And there are aspects which I'm not a fan of. You know, I mean, okay. um, if you're taking a phone call with someone in Japanese, you're expected that even while you're on the phone, you bow uh -huh. because of the idea that <laughs> the other person can feel the seriousness or the respect. Yeah. Which I think is a bit much. I agree. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think with any culture, you have the good and the bad aspects. And yeah, okay. Uh, you, you have to look at what works out for you, what you're comfortable mm -hmm. with. Okay. Then how do you like to spend your free time? So if it's um, after working, then I'll probably just sit at home and play some video games or do some painting or something. Oh. On the weekends, I'll try to meet up with some friends. Mm -hmm. um, either we'll go and have lunch somewhere or we'll try to do some activity or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the benefits of living in a city like Tokyo Mm -hmm. is that there are a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. And if you have interests, like say you have video games, you have the Tokyo Game Show. If you like mm -hmm. anime or manga, you have Komike, you have Jump Fest, you have all of these massive conventions which take place, which mm -hmm. you can then go and um, you know check out and see yeah. displays, interact with people. 
there's a lot of a lot more opportunity to do things here mm, okay and do you i know that uh well this is a bit different but a lot of tourists yeah. think that japan is not so far with english and they struggle right. with finding activities do you think that's the case or it's not as in activities in english yeah 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 or just you know yeah i i would agree um oh, okay so if you don't know japanese 90% or more of your interactions will be with expats yeah. um that is other foreigners or maybe japanese um people who have lived abroad and come back mm, yeah it is uh, it's it's there's not a lot of i mean there is the effort to try and be more inclusive of english speakers mm -hmm. but at the same time i don't think that the people feel any need to tr to go out of their way and try to include people who speak english or okay. get more english speakers uh -huh. you know um, a lot of the attempt a lot of the english support comes from the fact that being able to um, speak in english or being able to serve people and talk to them in english i'm mm -hmm. talking from a customer um, customer service yeah. point of view here yeah that comes from the fact that it's tokyo which is a major yeah. trading hub it's a large okay. tourist destination the country yeah. itself is a huge tourist destination mm -hmm. but i don't feel like it's out of for the most part i don't feel like it's out of any desire to get to know everyone else mm -hmm. but more to be able to benefit from the fact that foreigners are coming and they ah, bring their okay. business to the country ah okay i see oh yeah okay yeah i see what you mean okay yeah, yeah. then um maybe a last question from me uh do you have any tips or advice for those who are abroad and is looking yeah. for work in japan if they so one thing is that um as i said before if you graduate from a japanese university or even language school mm -hmm. that's a big plus that helps oh, really? um okay. your chances greatly yeah if you know japanese um or you or you learn japanese that also massively mm -hmm. increases your chances and okay. make sure to complete the jlpt test so that uh -huh. you have a proper certification of your japanese level right okay. and finally um look at startups or look at more international companies mm -hmm. because they are usually open to supporting people with relocation or coming um to japan especially mm -hmm. larger companies because mm -hmm. they often have a full setup um so if you're oh, coming as right. a worker to japan mm -hmm. you you need a company to sponsor your initial worker visa yeah your for your initial application so yes. larger companies are usually more willing to do that and mm -hmm. they have a better setup to be able to support you when you do that okay yeah that's true of course like they're more used to doing it as well yeah exactly Great. Well, that's it from my side. Uh, do you have anything else you would like to share? Um, just uh, one thing, which is that it, it it can get a bit lonely here because, like I said, uh, until your Japanese is better, a lot mm -hmm. of your interactions will mostly be with foreigners. Mm -hmm. And even once you learn Japanese, you still have to learn their social customs and the way they interact mm. with each other mm. which is very different yeah and if you come here don't come with the expectation that you will be seen as someone who is japanese or, or something of that mm. sort they have a sort of distinct identity it's okay. not necessarily negative or positive it just is okay you will you, you'll be a foreigner but yeah. that comes with its own benefits the okay. benefit that you won't always be expected to follow all of their customs uh -huh. which right. may not make sense or <laughs> which may just be habit you know mm -hmm. it's the idea that uh, you know if it's if it's a situation which they might normally ignore but you personally feel that you don't want to ignore it you know you can do that and they won't be as i mean if you're worried about how people in public will react mm. to you they won't yeah. react as strongly because they'll, they'll just think oh you're a foreigner they right. do foreigner things <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know 
don't try to make your identity mm. the identity of the country. Keep your own identity, but also be respectful of where you are and the people there. Okay. Because I Great. think that's a trap which a lot of people fall into and then they feel very depressed about it. Uh, that yep. why don't they see me as one of them? Yeah, for sure. Yes. Great. Well, thank you for those uh, wise words, I, I would say. <laughs> Uh, and thank you for your time as well. And thank I wish you. you the best of luck in the future. Thank you. And I wish anyone who watches this the best of luck. Great. Me too. <laughs>